All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan. I had to check to make sure I turned on the uh, the microphone. So uh, I really want to get back to playing Star Trek Online, but um, you know, today's Tuesday, so I should put out a video. So I didn't really look at the markets too much, but I mean, yesterday was a really big day. Today's obviously going to pull back a little bit from it, right? Because what's the usual? Up a lot, down a little bit, or somewhat, and up again a lot more. Higher highs, lower lows. That's just how it always goes. Heh. <laughs> that actually rhymes. I didn't even intend for it. And, on, um, you know, all things considered, it's not too bad. Now, there is yield, something called yield curve control, because I think I'm going to make that the topic of this. Uh, which is not listed here. Um... Treasury, because uh, Yahoo does not show everything. Let's see, yield. Let me see if I can try to get 13 week. 13 weeks. There we go. IRX. 13 week Treasury bill. This thing has been spiking like crazy. All right, because on Friday I think it was it spiked by like 20 percent or something. Uh, this. Yeah, it spiked by like 20% or something like that. It's kind of hard to see. And then now today it's up like 7.14. So basically what's happening is <clears throat> it's called Operation Twist. And apparently the Federal Reserve did this before. It was like back in 2008 or after that. Um, basically what the Fed does is they sell short-term debt. In this case, it'll be less than four and a half years. So 13-week treasury. It's probably other treasury bills too. I actually want to take a look at that. So that's why the yield here is spiking, because when you sell a bond, the yield goes up by a lot. <clears throat> when you buy a bond, the yield goes down. So it's a little counterintuitive. So what the Fed is actually doing is, as they said, like let's say they sell $80 billion worth of short-term bills. They then take that $80 billion and buy long-term debt. That's why the yield's going down. So that's the yield curve control. Now if you look at the 13-week and the 10-year gap right in yield price there's a massive gap here the fed can do this for a long time so i think what's going to happen is i'm still thinking about this but i think what's going to happen because they, the fed said they're going to keep the the federal reserve rate very low and then what they're going to do is they're just going to flatten the yield curve so basically all these treasury bills will be about the same <coughs> uh yield that's why it's called the, a flattening Now, I remember from my old, um, from my old Kenneth Fisher book days, uh, as long as there's a positive yield curve <clears throat> or flat, the markets will always go up. When the yield curve inverts, meaning the short-term yield is higher than, say, the 10-year yield, then you're in serious effing trouble. And I believe that's what's going to happen because the Fed will flatten the curve. It'll probably maybe last a few weeks, a few months. Well, not a few weeks. I think it'll last several months. Ideally, it'll be at the end of the year, and that will be just the perfect time for, you know, Bitcoin to already be like at a million bucks a piece or whatever it's going to be. Spike, and then we dump everything. Because once this yield, because what's going to happen is the Fed's not going to be able to f keep the yield curve flat because they're going to run out of money. Right, they'll have to issue more debt, and then you have hyperinflation, and then things really go berserk. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so we're definitely going to keep an eye on that. Um, let me see. Crude's finally recovering. Yeah, crude's been taking a pretty big beating for some reason. I don't know. Um, dollar index is about flat or up a little bit. Yeah, because right now the dollar and the 10-year yield, they're very stable. Meanwhile, the short-term bills are all going to crap. In fact, uh, let me see. They must have other yields here. Yeah, see, they list, they list all the treasury yields here. Ah, okay, let's go back. I gotta figure out how they coded this thing. 
U uh, U dot S dot shoot. Great. It doesn't show me everything. That's the problem. Can they at least show me like related ones? Do they have like a related quote? Maybe that could work. No. Because CNBC has everything. I just need to know what to look for. CN CNBC US Treasury yield quote. Just show me all of them. There's a 10 year, there's the two year. I guess we'll keep look at the two year. Uh, is this the seven year? There's the seven year. I mean, the seven year doesn't really matter. It's the same, we already have the 10 year. Uh, there's a one month treasury yield. Yeah, this thing is up a little bit. Yeah, this thing is up a lot actually. Probably is, what's, the, what's this in percentage? Uh, basically, it went up like this is actually up like 10%. Wow, look at that. Uh, price change. Oh, here it is. Price change is 7.14. This is a one month treasury yield. So the Federal Reserve has a shit ton of money to burn through for all of this. Alright, because look how small these rates are. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't believe the old the old college stuff is actually starting to become useful again. Here's the two year yield. Um, yeah, it's up a little bit, but see that's the thing. If they're trying to sell, that means someone has to be willing to buy it, right? Someone has to be willing to buy these short term debts. But that's the thing. What if no one does it? That's probably the other thing. But I'm pretty sure somebody will. Sure, somebody will. Uh, okay, so the Fed's got plenty of money to burn through. So I guess if you really wanted to gamble, just wait for this yield curve to approach flattening, and then you sell off all your stuff. I know I'm gonna sell off everything, crypto, my stocks, whatever, and then just ride it, just just wait it out. Uh, I'll probably keep a little bit just to do like options calls, but I mostly want to be in cash because I probably do not want this debt. Because here's a, you have a, well, here's the thing. If I have that much cash, I might, I'm trying to think. Would I actually want, ah, that's the thing. Do I actually want debt, though? Probably don't, because, you know, things are going to go pretty nuts. Uh, U.S. one-month treasury. Yeah, so basically all the short-term debt's going, uh, the yields are spiking. But that's technically a good thing, because, oh, does this show everything? Oh, this shows everything. Oh, this is actually we're gonna keep this page open because I don't want to have to keep searching for everything. Uh, silver futures, crude oil. I mean, I guess we don't have to look at that. Eh, I guess we don't need the silver futures either because they're just going to whatever. All right, so here's the Fed trying to do everything they can. But everything's going down, except that where's the? Th I guess. What is the 13 week considered? Because the 13 week's going up like crazy. Alright, but for the most part, there's plenty of room for all of us to, uh, you know, do their little thing. There's your three year treasury bill. Yeah. So the Fed's got a lot of room here. I guess it doesn't matter if, like, these short term debts all in uh, the yield curve here inverts each other. I don't know what effect that might have on the uh, on the markets, but for some reason, the long term debt, like five year and especially the ten year, uh, seems to affect everything. So, yeah. So silver is recovering. I mean, they're suppressing the price of silver. So, you know, not much we can do. Ten year yields fine. Gold's up a little. Crude oil has been getting beat uh, beaten like crazy, and now it's up somewhat. So that's actually pretty good for oil. Yeah, so for the most part, you know, market should be doing pretty well. Of course, yesterday was too much of a rise at once for one day. So today's going to be a little bit of a pullback. But this is a very good sign. So, so far, uh, everything's looking good. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. We did the yield curve. We did the thing. 
Yeah, I think Bitcoin's back at like, what, a little under 50K. It's like fluctuating around 48.5 to 49.5. Yeah, so I mean, until things so until things in the market stabilize a little more and start going up, crypto will probably be, you know, doing whatever it's doing. And it's pretty obvious that it's establishing a floor at Bitcoin 49, 48, 50K. Dogcoin's definitely worth five cents now it seems to be there cardano has been spiking like crazy which is great now it's a dollar 24 and then of course xrp there's a reason why i don't like xrp look it's still 44 cents why do i want this piece of shit you know piece of garbage crypto right it's the one crypto that i don't like you know all the other one you'll be, probably be fine all right so um yeah i mean i kind of want to get back to playing my game so oh yeah there's the stock guy again um yeah but i mean aside from that you know let's see riot's doing uh oh it's actually down 5.3 percent yeah i definitely am trying to uh take a look at um how the markets affect riot because yes yeah, this thing is correlated pretty well to cryptocurrency but the problem is it's still technically a publicly traded stock, right? So, you know, how do these two things, you know, reconcile? Yeah, even Mara is down a little bit because a lot, because some people seem to buy Mara too, because that's related to crypto and Bitcoin, correlated for some reason. All right, so uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah, people are making money. Oh yeah, that's really it. So. All right, so that was pretty short. Uh, oh, it's already 12 minutes. I barely said anything. So we'll keep an eye on that yield, 10-year yield. But we're definitely gonna, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on the short-term yield because that's where the Fed's going to be selling all their short-term debt to buy long-term debt to keep the yield, the yield curve stable. And that's the thing. If you could theoretically just keep doing this forever, doesn't that mean the markets can go up forever too and there's no crash? Ah, that's, that's the thing I'm, I'm, I'm trying to reconcile, too. So we'll just have to see what happens. Roy Kitty, no longer has a federal broker license. Yeah. Um, Exxon Mobil's doing well. Bank stocks look like they're doing all right. Yeah, it's going to be a stable day. All right, very good. If you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from. Or on, um, well, you know what, screw YouTube. Uh, where's my Rumble? Well, I had a Rumble account somewhere. All right, well, I'm going to go just go to my gab here. Uh, or just find me on rumble.com forward slash user forward slash real Johnson Chan. And, of course, just hit the subscribe button on whatever the hell they call it. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming again later, uh, trovo.live, forward slash, same thing, real Johnson Chan, and, uh, you know, we'll probably do the usual aftermarket thing. I've also been doing pretty well with my Telegram, I've been more aggressive about promoting Telegram, especially for my Twitter, so I think I figured out a halfway decent loophole. So, let me see, basically what I do is, I just simply repost from here and then I can, I can get the like oh, this is the desktop version but if I right click on telegram I can actually right click this get the post link to this and then link to this directly so people so it juices up my telegram the telegram is actually doing really well it's actually my fastest growing thing it's even better than gab so you know this this nice one two punch will work pretty well um hmm yeah, but I'm actually glad they f I found this page. Yeah, everything's going down. Just a couple of the short-term... Yeah, the one month is going crazy. Interesting. Yeah, this thing must be up a shit ton. Alright, we'll look at this and then we'll call it. Um, it's up 14.28%. Yeah, this thing is up a lot. Okay. Well, there's plenty of room, so I'm willing to bet that when this thing flattens out, that's when you should probably dump everything. That's actually pretty nice, because right now it's March 2nd, 2021. 
yeah, nine months would be more than enough time for this thing to flatten out, and then we dump everything, because the effect of this is probably going to kill the economy even more. <laughs> so, Also, I don't like the idea of a flat yield curve, because it, that means you're so close to the edge, it can easily invert. You don't want to be in the markets at that point. You know, you want to be in precious metals. You, um... See, that's the thing. Is, is it actually going to work this time? Right? Because I've seen when everything sells off, everyone goes into the dollar. So, I don't know, man. Like, everything just drops in value as the debt. But, the, you know, the debt bubble implodes. So, in that case, cryptocurrencies and precious metals are supposed to spike. I don't know. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a lot of confusion. So anyway, I'll see you all next week. We need a uh, telegraph. No, coin telegraph. We need a. Uh, okay. Oh. And there's really nothing here. Uh, does Yahoo have a thing here? Not really. Well, okay. All right. Well, we'll just gonna pick one at random then. Um, here we go. We'll 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 use this. We'll steal this guy's. We'll steal this one. All right. Perfect. I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching, and uh, just drop by the live stream later. I didn't actually realize I have to be now include the stupid HTTPS colon slash slash now, because it doesn't work otherwise. Very annoying.